right now, Eyewitness Sports. Good evening, I'm Brennan Miller with Eyewitness Sports. Our headline story today takes us to the high school basketball ranks. The New York State Sports Writers Association releasing its boys' small high school all-state teams. It's for classes B, C, and D. So starting at the top three Class B selections, Colton Frederick from Little Falls is the highest. He was placed on the second team, while Clinton's Tega Eagle was followed closely behind on the third, and Holland Patton's Jeff DeWar was a little further down the list on the sixth. Also in Class B, but not listed here, Sequoia Valley's Donovan Nelson was named to the honorable mentions. The similarity for all four of those Class B selections, they all scored their 1,000th point this season. In Class C, the most local selections of any class released, starting with a first-teamer in Jackson Ruan and his teammate Hayden Dumas, both of Waterville High School. Dumas was just below Ruan on the second team. Class C finishes out with Hamilton's do-it-all center, Drew Baker, who was on the fourth team, West Canada Valley's Cam Ludwig, who was on the fifth team, who was also selected as an all-state pick in football this year and scored his 1,000th point earlier on this season, and Cooperstown's Charlie Lambert, who was a seventh teamer as a senior this year for the Hawkeyes, his third all-state selection. Then a pair named in Class D, New York Mills, Tim Kuroko, the higher of the two as a fourth teamer. The highlight of his season, a 40-point game against Morrisville Eaton, which he followed up with a buzzer beater against sixth, sixth team, excuse me there, All-Stater Carter Cookenham and the Poland Tornadoes in mid-December. So those are the small schools, the large schools, and girls teams are expected to be released at a later date. Also tonight, a big couple of games in the North Division of the American Hockey League. The Utica Comets not playing until Friday, but still watching the scoreboard as the Syracuse Crunch, Belleville Senators, Toronto Marlies, and Rochester Americans were all playing tonight. In fact, they were all playing against one of those other three teams, Crunch and Senators, and Marlies and Americans, the head-to-heads. The biggest one, Syracuse and Laval. The Senators, the team that the Comets are chasing for the final spot in the North Division playoffs. Three points behind with three games to go, but... You can't assume or couldn't assume that the Senators were going to get points tonight against the division-leading crunch. Syracuse still was something to play for. Already mentioned that they lead the division, but that's just by a single point over the Americans, only two ahead of the Cleveland Monsters. So something on the line for both of those squads in that game. And I was talking about it in the six, but if I had to give a pick, I might go to the team ranked lower, Belleville, who has had Syracuse's number this year, 6-1 and one against the crunch so far going into this game. And they get a win in the shootout, so make it 7-1 and one against that North Division leading team for the Senators. A huge win for them as they are now just one or two points away from clinching that final playoff spot in the North. The other game, less impact on Utica. Toronto and Rochester both already in the playoffs, but still important for seeding. Mentioned that Rochester could move into first in the division if they won tonight and Syracuse didn't get a point. And with Toronto at 80 points and three games left, they could go from anywhere from first in the division. They could still win the North to fifth, depending on if they go 3-0 or 0-3. They're on track for the latter of those two options with a 3-1 to loss against the Americans. So the Americans pick up two points and Syracuse only picks up one. So right now it's a tie at the top of that division, which is really important to earn that buy and the right to play either the four or five seed in the second round of the playoffs. So both Rochester and Syracuse with a lot to play for now tied up at the top of the division with just two games to go. So Utica could still reach the postseason. Their magic number going into tonight was 10. Though with only six points left to earn, they'll need some help from the other teams in the division. They also need a boost to their roster, and the team was hoping that a new signing today is going to do just that. Former Cornell and Boston College forward Jack Malone has reportedly signed an ATO, that's an, uh, a tryout contract with the Comets, for the remainder of this season with an AHL deal for the next two years tacked on to the end of that. So regardless, you're going to see him playing in a Comets jersey next year and the year after, barring, of course, any trades. Malone transferred to play with the Eagles after a complete career with the Big Red in Ithaca and had 25 points in 41 games this most recent season. He was drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in the sixth round in 2019, but did not sign a contract with that organization. Funnily enough, we could have been seeing him at that time with the affiliation between Vancouver and Utica. Malone's time at BC will be most remembered for his game-winning overtime goal against the defending national champion Quinnipiac that sent the Eagles to the Frozen Four before they then defeated Michigan to advance to the national championship where they then lost to Denver. So not an ideal outcome tonight for the Comets. Belleville gets that win so they can move closer to that final playoff spot. So Utica going to have to win out 
to have a chance. All right, thanks, Brennan. Yep. Coming up next after the break, I'll bring you the latest trending stories from around the nation. Stay with us.